Welcome to How to Play Ambient Guitar, episode 13. Today, we're going to look at capos. If you haven't already seen the rest of the series, you can check it out here. Meanwhile, let's get to work. All right, if you're like me, you may have acquired a collection of capos over the years. And if you're like me also, you may use them fairly extensively on acoustic guitar. But did you know that capos can come in handy with electric guitar and ambient guitar playing in particular? So what I like to do is look at just a few uses for capos on electric ambient guitar. So first use is probably what you've used it for on, a, on an acoustic guitar, and that is just raising the relative pitch of the guitar so that you can keep all your familiar chord shapes and play in a higher key. Right, so pretty standard use. One of the great things though is that there are other types of capos. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this standard capo on the first fret. Let's check that out here. This looks like a standard capo um, just upon first glance, but if you look at it a little bit closer, you'll see that it's actually a little bit shorter than a standard capo. And that's because this is a drop D partial capo. So if we put it on the guitar backwards, so in other words, the kind of, it goes up instead of down as you install it on the guitar. And if we put it on the, in this case, the third fret, or if you don't have any capo on the second fret, you get a drop D tuning. And in my case, since I've got my um, my uh, capo, my standard capo on the first fret, obviously that first fret is going to be an F. This would actually be an F major chord in played in a D chord shape. So that's pretty cool. You can do lots of nifty things with that. So, if you like playing in drop D with that ooh, low string tuned down to D, you can simulate it with this capo, which is a drop D style capo. Don't worry about the brand. As a matter of fact, yeah, I'll put the brands of the capos that I like in the video description below. All right, so that's the drop D capo. Let's check out one of my other favorites. And this is a partial capo. And it's designed, this particular one is designed to cover the fifth, fourth, and third strings only. So it is possible to flip it around and you could do the fourth, third, and second strings, but really it was meant to cover just the fifth, fourth, and third strings. So if I do that, what that gives me is a dad-gad simulation. So again, this is gonna be a kind of a drop D feel, but it's the full dad-gad kind of flavor to the tuning. You can hear sometimes when you're using capos, you'll, you've got a little tuning issue to deal with. So let's take care of that. I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I'm back. Let's see what we can do with this dad-gad simulation. So remember now, if I'm, if I'm playing just all open strings, I've got the basic tuning of dad-gad. But for example, if I play a full bar chord, because I'm still in standard tuning, I can take advantage of standard chords if I wish. 
So that works out in some really great ways when you use some dadgad techniques along with standard chord techniques with this particular capo configuration. So let's check it out here. Pretty cool. So again, I, I I actually use this quite a bit, um, in particular with acoustic guitar. But if you listen through all the chords of Orion albums, you will be able to pick out particular tunes where I use this type of capo configuration. And yes, I do actually use two capos a good bit of the time. So anyhow, that's. That's pretty cool. All right, let us move on now. Here's another nifty thing you can do with a standard capo and a split capo. You could do it with just a split capo, but if you're like me, use them both. Um, if you move the the f if you move up more than two frets from where either you're not if there's no capo or your capoed fret, you can get some really cool uh, effects. So let's go up one, two, three, four, five frets above the uh, the lowest fret or the nut, depending on how you're doing it. And let me check the tuning here. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. All right, I'm back. My capos are in place, guitar is a little bit better in tune, and let's see what we can do with this configuration. One of the cool things, well, let, let's listen to just the strings with no fingering at all. Here we go. Hmm, so you might be thinking, that's a weird tuning bow. What can I do with that? Well, just keep in mind that you're still in standard tuning, really. So if you play a bar chord, you've got all the standard chord, per, you know, chord shapes that you know and love. So if you take some standard chord shapes, let's, well, I don't know, like an F minor here. Okay. And just kind of take, make a partial chord out of it. Okay. Oh, there we go. That's kind of a G, G shape. That's, that's pretty familiar. But if we add in a couple of other um, notes from the capo, let's see what we get. Ah, that's my G shape, but I'm actually playing a C sharp in this case. Remember, I'm on the first fret and then on the sixth fret. Okay, so if I continue kind of along those lines, I can get to a C and a D shape. Okay, not too unfamiliar, although if I play the open F, kind of nice, right? So it's not a standard uh, Pretty cool. One of the other cool things you can do is actually, uh, if you've got your capos far apart, so you can actually play behind the capo on the strings that are not covered by the partial capo. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, let me do that again. So I'm sixth string and then the second string. You might be thinking, Bill, 
Why would I want to do that? Well, you might want to do that to take advantage of the capoed strings that are not going to change in pitch, right? No matter how much you play behind the capo on those strings. So let's let's check that out. So in this case, the partial capo kind of acts like two fingers sitting on the sixth fret for you. And I don't know about you, but if I'm down here, you know, all the way on the first fret, really the second fret, but you, you know what I mean. If I'm all the way down here, I, my hands aren't big enough to stretch up that far, right? So, uh, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> cool things you can do with that. So I would encourage you to get yourself a split capo. Again, I'll, I'll put some links to this capo um, in the video description below so you know where to get it from. And play around with, you know, kind of intervals between either the nut of your guitar or wherever the lower uh, capo is. Well, there you have it. Just a few ways to leverage capos to extend the range and the voicings of your ambient guitar music. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. I've got ambient guitar related content coming every week. Also, if you're interested in Chords of Orion music, you can check it out here. And as always, I'll see all of you on the next video.